All right, we will continue our discussion of the blood portion of the cardiovascular system, looking at erythropoiesis. You can see the prefix here, erythro means red, so we're looking at red blood cell production that occurs in the bone marrow. And this is stimulated by a cell, like I said last time, called erythropoietin. We can abbreviate it EPO. And essentially what this hormone does is it increases in the blood when oxygen levels fall. For example, if someone is training high at high altitudes where the oxygen levels are low, you're going to see an increased production of erythropoietin from the kidney into the blood. Another example might be if a person has a lung disease, for example, chronic asthma or emphysema from a lifetime of smoking, they can end up with high secre or increased secretion of erythropoietin and more red blood cells than normal because of those chronically low oxygen levels. So this production of EPO is important for maintaining homeostasis when it comes to oxygen levels. So decreased oxygen levels in the blood stimulates the kidney to secrete erythropoietin and the erythropoietin will stimulate the red bone marrow to secrete and, and mature the red blood cells at a faster rate. So it's a kind of an indirect stimulus of red blood cell production, the decreased oxygen levels. So the decreased oxygen levels actually are sensed by the kidney which secretes the EPO which then stimulates the red bone marrow to make more red blood cells. And this um, process has been taken advantage of by um, elite athletes and it's called blood doping. They'll actually remove some of their blood which will result in low oxygen levels temporarily and that will release or uh, result in increased EPO production and that will increase the red blood cells then that blood that was taken out is put back into the system and as a result of that a person has more red blood cells and as a result of having more red blood cells they have better oxygen delivery to the tissues during long distance events and for example Lance Armstrong was caught um, doing blood doping as a way of winning the Tour de France and he had to return those awards because he acquired them illegally using blood doping and this process of EPO secretion to increase red blood cell production. So we have this EPO that is um, st low oxygen levels stimulate the kidney to secrete it into the blood and then that EPO acts on the bone marrow to make more red blood cells so we see more red blood cells and then um, over time those red blood cells die and it takes about oh, anywhere from two to three months for those red blood cells to break down because recall they don't have a nucleus so they can't live very long in the blood um, that's in the vasculature so they um, eventually will die. The plasma membrane weakens and their contents, the hemoglobin, is broken down into two components into heme and globin. The globin is used to, is, I'm sorry, is broken down into different amino acids and is reabsorbed, remains in the blood. And then the heme is broken down into bilirubin which is a yellow pigment which is taken up by the liver. So the liver is what cleans up the bilirubin from our blood and converts it, secretes it into the small intestine where the large intestine will act on it, um, the bacteria in the large intestine, and it will um, be excreted from the body in the form of the feces. Now bilirubin specifically is what gives stool its brown color. Um, the iron that was part of the heme is stored in um, the blood and what how that works is the liver binds transferrin and releases that blood back to the blood vessels where transferrin holds that excess iron. So when people are looking at their iron levels, they'll actually look at transferrin levels to, to, as an indicator of how, what their iron content is like and what their iron stores are. So the liver is very important for storing iron and again um, this transferrin which carries iron in the blood. Um, People know that you know eating calves liver or cows liver is a important source of iron so some people like to eat liver for that purpose because it is important for storing iron. 
But um, some of the bilirubin that results from the breakdown of the heme molecule that is not that does not enter the small intestine um, does enter the blood and goes through the kidneys to uh, be excreted in the urine. So bilirubin is what makes urine yellow. <coughs> And we know that bilirubin is broken down by ultraviolet light. So if someone is doing urine testing in the lab, for example, they want to make sure they keep that urine away from the light because it would break down the bilirubin. And we also know that babies, um, newborns, are sometimes born with um, high bilirubin levels shortly after birth because their liver is not quite mature enough to break down the heme from those red blood cells, the hemoglobin. So it cannot break down the heme. and um, that I mean it can break down the heme but it can't um, filter all the bilirubin out of the blood so the bilirubin builds up and then leaks into the tissues and gives baby a yellowish color and that's what we call jaundice and jaundice again is treated by exposing that baby's skin to ultraviolet light because we know that helps break down bilirubin and usually within a week or so the baby's liver has matured and is capable of breaking down bilirubin and keeping up with the red blood cell destruction process that is occurring so here's just another diagram showing what happens to hemoglobin as it breaks down. We have macrophages that help in this process, that help get rid of excess dead red blood cells. Um, again, the hemoglobin is released. The heme is broken down into bilirubin and iron. Remember, the iron goes into the liver. Some of it is also stored in the spleen. And then the bilirubin is converted and uh, sent into the intestine in the form of bile and some to the kidney to give urine its yellow color and it's secreted in the urine some of that bilirubin. So a very efficient process because we know that red blood cells can only live about 120 days or about three months in our general circulation. So here's what jaundice looks like. We sometimes see a yellowing of the eyes when the jaundice is much more um, advanced. So this is the buildup of bilirubin again in the blood and it leaks out into the tissues. And we start to see this when that bilirubin gets pretty high, as we can see here. 0.5 is normal, but we start to see yellowing of the skin when that bilirubin le reaches about 3 to 4 milligrams per deciliter of blood. So different things can cause jaundice or can cause increased bilirubin. Sometimes we have, there's anemias that actually destroy red blood cells and those broken red blood cells then are releasing um, hemoglobin and which is broken down into bilirubin so that just builds up in the blood. Sometimes we have import, impaired transport of bilirubin and um, it builds up in the blood because the uh, liver is not efficient in cleaning up the blood because maybe blockages in the vessels or increased pressures in the um, vessels leading to and from the heart to and from the liver can cause impaired circulation and a buildup of bilirubin and also disease within the uh, liver itself as in cirrhosis of the liver or hepatitis those are two diseases of the liver where they will the liver cannot function properly those cells are um, impaired or in the newborn what we talked about already with um, an immature liver and that can improve with a little bit of time So white blood cells now, um, like I said, we're not going to spend a lot of time on these. Just know that they are important for the immune system function and they have a, uh, several different roles. Neutrophils are um, very efficient at fighting bacteria. Eosinophils and basophils are important in allergic reactions. We'll see them elevated in allergic reactions. And eosinophils are also increased in number in those that have a parasitic worm infection. Lymphocytes are the, t, uh, the B cells and the T cells, so they um, help with immunity and launching an immune attack leading to um, antibody development. And monocytes become macrophages out in the tissues and are important in what we call phagocytosis, and that's basically chewing up or ingesting cellular debris and bacteria. Thrombocytes we talked about are the um, blood, uh, the cells in the blood that are responsible for stopping bleeding. Um, so they are what we call platelets and um, they start the blood clotting process if the cut is too significant for just a platelet plug. 
So we'll continue in our next video talking about hemostasis.